Hello YouTube. Today I would like to show you how you can calculate the delayed lens effect uh, so, uh, on, on a regenerative acceleration uh, generator. Uh, so this is a follow up video on my uh, earlier uh, video about the Tansi Heinz regenerative acceleration generator uh, replication. So today I would uh, show you how you can calculate the delayed lens effect. Uh, so there we go. In a normal inductor you can see that when you provide a DC voltage to it that the inductor will respond uh, on this by creating a magnetic field and the creation of the magnetic field follows this graph. So at 1 L over R times or L divided by R times uh, the magnetic field uh, has uh, expanded to 63.2% of its maximum field strength. So, and at 5 L over R times, you can see that it uh, has reached its maximum and it's 100%. So, uh, and when you remove the DC voltage from it, then you see the uh, the opposite effect taking place. So that uh, in 1 L over R times, you would expect that the magnetic field is diminished to let's say 36.8% uh, uh, and that uh, in 5 L over R times uh, in the, the total magnetic field is gone. So this is the normal uh, reaction which you can expect when you try to hook a DC voltage uh, to a normal inductor and, and and uh, at the second part you can see what you would expect when you try to remove uh, it from the normal DC voltage. So what we have done in the regenerative uh, generator uh, example, in the regenerative uh, acceleration generator example, is that we do the exact opposite. So then we introduce a magnet. Uh, so that all of a sudden there is a magnetic field and all of a sudden it is gone. But in this generator uh, this, this action goes so fast that the, nor the, that the high impedance coil isn't able to create its back EMF fast enough. So in this uh, graph you can see that in 1 L over R times it is uh, at 63.2 percent but when you increase L then you can see that the total time constant uh, constant value is also increased. So now I've looked, uh, I would like to do some calculation. Uh, for now, when we uh, when we try to calculate uh, values from a normal uh, from a normal generator, what I've done is that I have uh, I have measured uh, two values of, of one coil uh, of one coil of our uh, 500 watt uh, 240 ohm uh, two, sorry 240 volt uh, volt generator and this generator uh, has got a, a generator coil of 106 milliamperes and an <coughs> and it's uh, it's got an internal resistance of 21.1 ohms. So in this schematic, uh, this is the coil. Here's the internal resistance and here's the load. When you try to calculate the time constant for this, uh, you can see that the time constant is L divided by R total, uh, R, R total. So uh, R internal plus the R load. So when for instance you try to hook up a 200 ohms load to it, then you can fill in the parameters and you can see that, that it will take you uh, 0.4794 milliseconds uh, for the generator coil to create its back EMF uh, to 63.2%. Uh, so this is really fast and this is when uh, in normal generators you can see that uh, it's pretty easy to introduce rotor drag because this value is low. Uh, so now let's do the same for the regenerative acceleration generator example. What I have done is uh, for those two values I have used exactly the same values uh, as which you can see earlier in my uh, regenerative acceleration generator uh, replication video. So for now it is 2.1 A2 Henry's and my generator coil has an internal resistance of 384.5 ohms. So when you try to hook up the same load to this, uh, the same 200, and 200 ohms 
uh, load resistance, you can see that you get a total uh, different time constant value of it. So this value is much bigger than in the previous uh, low current coil, uh, low impedance, low, uh, hi, sorry, high current, low impedance coil. So in this case, it's now 3.7 milliseconds, and you can see that uh, with this high impedance coil, uh, this value is almost 10 times bigger than in the previous high coil, high current coil. So this. Uh, is the, the time constant value 0.4794 milliseconds for a normal generator coil, high current, low voltage, and for the regenerative uh, generator coil, uh, high voltage uh, and high impedance, you can see that this value is almost 10 times as big. So this is what we are looking for, uh, because when this value is big, the back EMF of the generator coil isn't fast enough to create rotor drag. But instead of it, when this value is, is uh, high enough and your uh, rotor frequency is high enough, then it will create uh, acceleration instead of rotor drag. And that is what we are looking for. Now, one more thing what I have also done is that I have did the same calculation for the regenerative acceleration uh, generator uh, also at 2.182 Henry's and uh, 384.5 ohms of internal resistance but now uh, in case of uh, a shorting so uh, here you can see that now it is short circuit that, 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 that there is introduced now a short circuit to uh, the regenerative acceleration uh, generator coil and in this case you can see that the value uh, the normal time constant is even uh, bigger than uh, the 3.7 uh, milliseconds uh, which you saw in the normal of in the in the in the load example so you can see that uh, one more time the regenerative acceleration generator under load uh, will create a 3.73 milliseconds uh, time constant and when you short it the time constant is uh, uh, then, then you will get an even bigger time constant. So <coughs> uh, here you can see that uh, uh, this time constant is uh, directly in relation with uh, what we saw earlier in my previous videos. So that when you try to short the regenerative uh, generator uh, high impedance coil, that uh, the acceleration effect uh, takes. Uh, takes place at lower frequencies and that when you try to do the same thing for uh, uh, a normal load connected to it that the value is uh, yeah, slightly uh, smaller so that you will need a higher frequency to get the same effect. So uh, compare uh, one more time uh, when we compare the normal generator coil uh, high current uh, low impedance you can see that this time constant value is really small so the back EMF is uh, is developing really fast uh, so you can see that in normal generators there is uh, introduced rotor drag really fast and that in the regenerative acceleration uh, setup this value almost is 10 times as big uh, the time constant value so that you can sh uh, see that with uh, fast rotor RPM or, or frequency uh, generator frequency uh, you can see that when you compare the frequency time constant with this time constant that uh, you can see that you would be able to create regenerative acceleration. Okay, that was it for today. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.